Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Nerd Herd Comic Book Club. Your number one stop for stellar reviews of volumes, arcs, or stories that us or yourselves choose. You can find us live every Wednesday on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch, and the replay on all podcast networks. Take a seat, get yourselves and your opinions ready, as it's time to join the herd. But first, please put your hands together for your hosts, Shane. Phil and Scott as they kick off this week's discussion. Ahoy hoy and welcome to the Nerd Herd Comic Book Club. I'm stepping in for Scott this week as he was supposed to be hosting, but he's out living his life. Um kind of rude of him i mean you know we only ask for an hour a week don't we but um i am more than happy to step in because this week we are reading daveocracy from 2017 from idw comics this is the third volume in the dave trilogy it was once again written by ryan ferrier with art by valentin ramon letters by ryan ferrier as well double team this book um, um so no scott this week unfortunately but once again that does mean we are joined by the awesome and amazing martin up here from sonics comics hey everybody and as always we're joined by the man that you all come to see it's phil hello so we've all heard of the fifth beetle it's like martin's like the unofficial fourth member i think the nerd heard by this point <laughs> it's getting, it's getting yeah. to that stage yeah, I mean, this is your ninth appearance now, Martin. You're, you're, you're gonna have to start sharing the price of StreamYard <laughs> instead. <for me>. <laughs> <laughs> um, just a couple in, I want to say hello to before I give the synopsis for this book. We have Liam in, he says, Heidi Ho, hi Liam, thanks for joining. And Lewis Deacon is also in, howdy doody, thanks for joining, Lewis. So Daveocracy is the third in the trilogy of the Dave books, and the synopsis for this, I think, goes a little bit like this. Um, after saving Earth from, that's Earth with a three, not an E, from Alien Invaders in Volume 1, and saving the future by visiting the past in Volume 2, uh, Dave is now trying his hand at politics. This may be the fight of his life, and it will be anything but fair. Um, this election is definitely going into sudden death. Uh, this is the final chapter in the Dave trilogy as he tries to save Earth one final time, but this time from threats within. So I think that's a synopsis that doesn't give too much away. Yeah, we're gonna I get think into you that. that well. It's better than yeah. the book itself, to be honest. <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that. Ouch. Ouch. Um, as this is the third and final story in the Dave trilogy, we will be doing the overall score for this as well, because we have the scores from volume one and two, which we both read on the Nerd Herd series one, I believe. Did we yeah. do both of them in series one, or did we do... No, Dave, Dave. two, maybe in the sequels, which would have been obviously second year, I think. Okay, yeah, it was a year ago. A year ago, yeah, wow, it was a year ago. Nearly yeah, I picked both of those, and shockingly, I didn't pick this one. Scott picked this, so yes, and Scott, who, who picks this book, makes us read this other cack and then just doesn't even show up tonight. <laughs> So I was saying to Martin beforehand, we have three different perspectives on this because I read this when it came out. So I read volume one when it came out, volume two when it came out, volume three, and then I've reread it again for the herd. Um, Phil, this is your first time reading this and you've read all three just for the herd. So you've had the gap in between. But Martin, the superstar up here, read all three volumes <laughs> in one day to catch up for this week's show. So we're gonna have three very different views on this book, which is really handy. Um, judging by your name, Phil, I am gonna ask you second what you thought of this. Okay. I'm gonna start with Martin. <laughs> what did you think? Um, sadly, this is the worst of the three. <laughs> Easily. Yeah, this was the worst one. Um, I feel completely daved out now. Uh, not only did I read the books, but I also watched the previous shows 
after watching every book. So I have I had a full 24 hours of Dave, and this is the one that broke me, sadly. <laughs> I think that's fair. I mean, quality-wise, I think this is the worst of the three. I think quality has declined as the books went on. This would have been great as a one and done because I really enjoyed volume one. Um, mm -hmm. That's obviously why I picked it for the herd way back when. And mm -hmm. I think overall, it didn't score too bad. I think, what did we get? Um, a 7.4 average we got for the first volume. So and that's, that's not bad at all. Yeah. So, I mean, what can you do in, with the story? It's, it's, it, I, I, I don't want to be mean and say it's a one trick pony, but swearing robots can yeah. only go so far, I think. Yeah. But, Phil, what did you think of this one? Um, also, you can see by my name, I, I've taken a, a term that Pete from Triple G Comics uses and other CAC. I, I, I did not care for this at all. Um, it doesn't help me. I wasn't feeling my best myself to try and read this book. But, you know, because we, with the Nerd Herd, you have to finish the book to be able to talk about it and get a, a fair score. If I was reading this on my own, off my own bat, I would have put this down after issue one and never looked at it again. Um, Dave, to be fair, like the first Dave book was was grand. The jokes worked, the comedy worked. You know, even the idea of Scotty, you know, masturbating as, as stupid as that was, it worked. <laughs> this just it, it, this is not the same book. It's not the same. Doesn't have the same vibe. Doesn't have the same feel to it. What was the purpose of this story? What I don't get it. Um, uh, bringing bringing an end to the to the Dave saga. Maybe I don't know. I just it wasn't for me. I just wasn't on board. Unfortunately, um, because I if you read the back of the book, you get some um quotes from people and some websites, and one of them um mentions that this obviously was written in 2017, so this is heavily influenced mm. by the writer's political view. Mm. Uh, you can see that it's not hidden. I feel like I, I've never been a fan of politics in books. And I know the thing, I know people say politics have always been in books and they have, but they've always left it up to the reader to decide um, mm. which way you want to swing. It's always been in there and then the reader decides. They never tell you which way to swing. Obviously, that's changed recently. And this book is very, I mean, you have Sam chanting, make Earth great again. So, I mean, what, you know, he, what, what are you supposed to take away from that? Yeah. that they, they didn't hide it very well, did they? No, not at all. Um, but on the flip side, I will say that even though this was 2017, it actually predicts quite a lot of 2020 <laughs> when you actually think about the Sam robot being the person that steals an election, you know, is not qualified for the job, is bought and paid for by big tech, has an army of pink haired, you know, NPCs to do his bidding. <laughs> like this, this predates 2020, but this is more relevant today than it would have been in the 20th in 2017 when it came out i found that hilarious that the writer was going for one thing but when you read it now it actually goes the opposite direction <laughs> and i don't think many books could do that but um surprisingly um it, i mean again it disagrees with phil all the time so liam says that he thought that this was the best of the three not by much but <laughs> they, they, that's surprising. Um, the first one's really good. I mean, because it was new, I think. But um, I'll go into why two and three go downhill a bit for me as we go on, I think. Um, uh, Kepler's dad says he's still reading Ocracy. Just got through Dave and Dave 2. Okay. So he's catching up for the herd as well. That's really nice. Thank you. And Connie's in the chat. She says, oh, sup, nerds. And she didn't read it. Shock. Lucky you. Yeah. <laughs> Connie. Wish I didn't leave it to be brutally honest. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, it's it's one of those books, isn't it? Um, what about the art for 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 Martin who hadn't read this before? Because Phil, this is the exact same art in one and two. So Martin, what did you think of the art? I didn't think it was too bad. I, I like a I like a sci-fi read. I like a, I like the sci-fi art. So you know my expectations with sci-fi art isn't I don't have it that high because I always appreciate sci-fi. Um, I think the only thing I did feel it was a little bit flat. Um, mm -hmm. for, and I think I felt like that was all the way through, 
all of them. That was the consistency through the books, I have to admit. Um, this one was a bit more Flat colourful in places. I think the flatness is something we picked up on um, in oh. volumes one and two. Like the motion is not very, it, everything feels very much like a still image. Even yeah. when they're fighting, it is, there's just, there's no blur or anything like that to give you any sense of movement mm. in the book. The art doesn't do a good job at like even being playing its part in the story because there's a few inc incidences instances where this occurred but it's like it's more towards the end whenever he was fighting uh or it was it was his wife wasn't it or his it was sally wasn't it and she threw him at the building he landed on top of the truck like a water bottle truck or something stupid hmm. and all of a sudden the water bottle trucks turn over on its side but like you just see him being thrown out the window and landed on the truck you don't doesn't really portray that kind of movement at all very well and i just think no. it was as nice as it is like to look at like it's pleasant it's grand and it is quite flat it doesn't add to the story um but again it's the best part of the book i'll say that <laughs> i do like the character designs um especially dave i mean what what's not to love about a robot wearing you know trainers and a shirt that's all askew and a pair of jeans like he looks there's no need for them to wear clothes. I do like the fact that the robots wear clothes. And especially um, Scotty's fiance, is it Glenn? And he's got his 3D yeah. glasses sellotaped to the side of his yeah. face. You could just see the tape down either side. <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. Um, character design wise, I'm okay with. The art is very stationary. I think I had the same problem with um, Saga. Mm -hmm. That I didn't get that sense of motion and drama from Saga when we were reading it. Yeah, but Saga's far superior than this. Um, and I don't want to get, like, knock the guy because I, I'm not an artist. I don't have experience of, of doing this kind of thing. But um, I, I, this is very run-of-the-mill, like, the indie book type of thing in terms of, like, I, I don't... I don't know how many people will pick this up by flicking through it and thinking, this is a good one. I'll get this this week. I don't think it would happen. So, no, I, this is very much for people that picked up Dave 1 and 2, isn't it? Oh, 100%. But the thing, what I all, no. all, all think about, and I'm touching on the story here too, but like if you have a friend who's new to comics, he's like, I went to the comic book shop and I seen this book about robots and I thought it was it looked quite interesting. I picked it up. Like They would never look at comics again. Like This this does not <laughs> portray what a comic is. Or what, what, How to joy. turn people off of comics in exactly. one book. So you're right, in terms of this story, the only people who bought this were people who bought, or people who read Dave and Dave 2. And yeah, if I mean, you got that's to the end why of, I bought it. Yeah. But if you got to the end of this, well well done, because so f there's plenty of, plenty of better books out there um, than that, than this. Yes. Yeah. Um, so we said Connie didn't read this book, and we were surprised. And then she comes back with this. She says, I wasn't going to read three books. What am I, a nerd? <laughs> <laughs> Martin, big, she just called you a nerd, <laughs> and I and I welcome it. Thank you for that badge <laughs> of pride. Yes. And Liam wants to know Martin's scores for volumes one and two. Yeah, I have He's got some scores. He's keeping, You've got some scores. So you give us scores for all three. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, I've got so scores for all three. To that. So. Um, there's going to be a lot to talk about with the writing and the story. So should we get to our pages so we yeah. can show the art? Like we said, it is exactly the same as volumes one and two, but let's get to our pages so we can show everyone what we're working with. So um, should we go with, we'll go with Scott's first since he's not here. Do you have a reason for Scott's picking this page? Yep, I am just trying to grab a night. Just to... let's see which page did Scott pick. So this is the the final page of issue one, um, where Dave kind of announced he's, he's running for president. And Scott wrote, "I like the juxtapositioning of this picture: the traditional values of Dave trying to do the right thing by America, versus the chaotic visual of Sam being created. This page helps set up the tone for the rest of the story." Yep. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah, it's not bad. Like the art isn't bad. I don't yeah. think. I don't think you could call it bad. I think 
with some improvements to the motion and the drama aspects of the action scenes, I think it could really, really work. But the designs are great. Hmm. Although I did think a hell of a lot of stuff at the um, the Google stand-in. What was that called? What was the Google place called? Duda. Uh, Duda. Yeah. Was absolutely hectic. Um, you had to linger on the pages to figure out what was going on. The whole page was just full of things. There was just robots here and things happening there, and this person's upside down, and these person. It was very, very busy, um, and for an art style with no motion or no movement, it was an odd kind of busy, if that makes sense. You know when you see a busy page in a comic book because there's buildings falling and people are fighting in the background and there's there's smoke and it's whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. And this was just a stationary, static busyness. I don't know how to explain. I was just uncomfortable with the amount of things happening on a page. I, it could just be me. Uh, Martin, how about your page? Um, I picked this. <laughs> I picked this for one reason and one reason only, and that's because of it uh, sort of a nod towards the JFK assassination. You knew it was coming. As soon as you saw yeah. this page, you knew what was coming. <laughs> and I know we've said about it looking flat, um, and I think that is definitely due to the colour choices, I think, quite a lot. Mm -hmm. This for me stood out mainly because of all the color from the parade added over the top. It just just jumped out to me a little bit more than the art previously. Because I think this is one of the first pages of this of issue one. Yeah. So from coming from previous you know, Dave one and two, this was a little bit of a surprise to see so much color. Yeah, I, I almost um, picked it myself to be honest. It's just because there was the first one, one of the first ones that stood out definitely. Hmm. Um, but yeah, and but <laughs> it's a good example of the stillness of a scene that's supposed to be in motion. Yeah. Exactly. It seems more like a a snapshot, like a photograph, more than it does a fluid, like a you know, a fluid, yeah, sort of story it's, they're trying to tell. It's weird. I, it's it's. It's got to be a choice because it wouldn't be hard to add some lines, you know, some motion lines or anything, so a bit of smoke behind the car to let you know that it's moving. It wouldn't be hard to add those things. So the artist has chosen to do that. Um, well, let's be honest here. I mean, one of the reasons why I didn't like Alex Ross's uh, art in the comics, not like it, not didn't like it, but because it was very static. So this guy, who is it? Uh, Ramon Valentine. Um, he's, he's not far off Alex Ross then, by, by that logic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but miles off it at the same time um your page phil yes um the reason why i picked this page and um <laughs> i wonder if anyone can guess why i'll give i'll give you I'll is give it you the purple guess. is it all the purple on the page uh, and the pink and, no 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 because the one like the jokes fell flat this for me i, I, I didn't really find it funny but the one thing i did find funny uh, clearly that guy has made a penis out of the whatever he's <laughs> drinking or smoking or whatever it is in the bottom panel that is definitely a, a penis and that's the one moment in this whole book that i find quite funny um and that that's the reason why i picked this page that i mean i know it sounds really stupid but that's you, why i picked it you didn't even censor it you should have censored it so. no, no it's not an actual one you know it, it you know it's, it, it depicts one and i just thought it was quite funny the fact that you guys didn't even notice that or did you just notice i, I didn't notice it actually no but now it's no. all you can see isn't it? i can't unsee it now no yeah but that's 100 percent. that's what that is and this is the point with the some of these jokes are kind of like, like hidden easter egg jokes they want you to kind of discover i think and that's one of them so uh yeah yeah um joke wise i think maybe i had one chuckle per issue there was like one thing in each issue that did actually make me laugh but it wasn't as funny as the first volume not by a long no. shot um my page i picked scotty versus mm -hmm. the pink haired mob because this is again like it's meant to be motion but it's very still even though you've got great sound effects i love the grip the douche i love the hoist i think that's my favorite sound effect he actually says hoist as he picks the guy up <laughs> that that made me chuckle because it's a visual gag i mean i've never seen a sound effect for the word hoist but 
I, I quite like this. I, I like Scotty as a character, so seeing him kick butt was very, very fun. I think of this, I, I, I almost picked it as well, just because it has some wrestling moves and like, like the spear and stuff, you know, and he's spearing that. Um, I don't even know who those guys are, to be honest. But again, the reason why I didn't pick it at the end is just because you're what you've just highlighted there that there's just no motion. There's a lot of books that they can, you can, there's ways to do this, there's techniques an artist can use to portray that. If it's a visual choice, fair enough, then it's just not for me. But, um, this piece is cool and all with the wrestling moves, but it still lacks something uh, with the lack of movement or, you know, it doesn't even look like it's that much of a tense fight, to be honest. No, it no. looks like he's giving him a stunner at the top left-hand corner. Yeah, Stone Cold Stunner. Yeah. I do like in the bottom left corner, though, with the guy, he does ask him, what will it be, friendo, suplex or power driver? Power yeah. driver. He asks him what he wants. Like, he's so cocky by the end of the fight that he's just like, you get to he, pick how I finish you off. And he didn't even get to do his uh, his suplex. He really wanted to do one in the end. He didn't. Cool. So, I, mean, I think that's a fair representation of the art in this book. Um, decent character designs. Like I said, I'm, I, I, I have no fault in the character designs. Considering it's a robot civilization, everyone has their own personality. Everyone is distinct. Surprisingly, mm. they're not all designed exactly the same. You've got some that have heads that are um, like the old timey cameras, and it's, it's just it's very creative with the design of the robots. I think that might be where most of the creativity went in this book is the world building and the character designs over the actual storytelling. Yeah, yeah, I'll I agree. That. Even the two like what are they going to do? Like godlike robots um, who are the ones who are in charge of part Earth. Like they're very different to the. To Sally, he's very different. To Dave, he's very different. Well, Scotty and Dave are similar, but also they're they're, they're dressed differently, I suppose. Um, but then all the other robots are, are quite different as well. And yeah, they, they do look cool, like and still images and stuff. But it's just, I think we've obviously highlighted the problems with the art. But they look good, sure. But yeah, could be, could so be better. Story wise, then and writing. As we know now, we've read all three volumes. So we've read Dave vs. Aliens, we've read Dave Time Travels, and now Dave does politics. So we know we know the writer now and what he's capable of. What do we think of this, um, Phil? Um, if I'm being honest, it's the worst of the three, as we've mentioned. This was not um it was not entertaining. It wasn't funny. Um, Dave won the first Dave book, it says it's called Dave, isn't it? Like, uh, again, I liked it. It was funny. It was him just kind of kicking ass, wasn't it, and fighting wars and whatever else. And it was stupid, but it, you knew what you were getting. You know, that should have been the end of it, by the way. Dave, start, middle, and end. One and done. Forget about it. Um, with this one, I. I'll be honest, I can't remember what, what happened because it was I just wasn't on board with it. Um I don't know what they were trying to do. I don't know what I don't know what the purpose of this story was. Um the only kind of heartfelt moment was at the very end when mm. Scotty and Dave, you know, were having a father son moment um on his deathbed. And it's just I don't know. It's just the whole politics thing. I think you, you mentioned, obviously, and comics does this at times, where they do try and kind of get their political views across the story. And when it's kind of shown so clear as it is here, it's not enjoyable. You don't have fun time with it. Um, and yeah, I just think comedy books, and I, I, I'm not a bore. I like comedy. I like comedy and books, but I do have an issue with comedy books. Like books that are meant to be comical. Um, I just think some of the things that really fall flat. Or in like, in like a Captain America story, if there's a joke or something funny, and it disappears out of nowhere, you laugh at it, it's funny. But when a book like this is just kind of a bit like trashy comedy in a way, it's just not for me. It's just not my it's not my wheelhouse. You know? No, I think the reason Dave One worked over two and three is Dave was the only, for want of a better word, dick in this universe. Mm -hmm. He, you know, everyone else was just a normal robot living their life, doing their thing. And then Dave obviously had to upload his personality to 
get everyone to fight back against the aliens. So they all got part of his personality. So Dave 2 comes along and now everyone's a dick. So there's no contrast between characters when they're both, yeah. when everyone, every interaction is just two dicks having a conversation. It's not enjoyable when you've got a normal person and then you have Dave, you know, like, and Dave is just a complete and utter twat waffle, you know, like he's calling everyone names, he's getting drunk and he's kicking people's heads off and everyone else just has to deal with that. But then when everyone's doing that, it's just not enjoyable to watch anymore, is it, or to read? Yeah, like one of the main the main kind of tropes in, in Dave was his divorce from Sally, or a separation from Sally, and kind of having Scotty as a son. Like, but but Dave was a jackass, and she obviously left him. Um, am I right to think that she had an affair or something with an oil robot? Didn't she? Yes, I cannot remember his name, but there there was a guy. Oh, maybe Martin can remember. No, I don't remember. I, must... I don't remember having an affair. Maybe I'm no, wrong. She had a new boyfriend. Yeah, new, boy, had, new yeah. boyfriend. Yeah, yeah she had a new boyfriend because he was in the back on the phone talking at one point. Yeah. And he was like, oh, who's that on the phone? He's like, oh, no, don't worry, don't worry. I didn't, I didn't what... think that was an affair. I thought it was a boyfriend because Scotty but, knew yeah. about him. The thing I was trying to say was like, it's not so much like, you know, I don't, I don't care for that, but um, Dave being a dick and a lousy dad and, you know, living a lousy life and a lousy partner kind of drove her to, ha- to, to find someone else type of thing hmm. um and you're right so that you had that kind of good interaction you kind of felt for sally, sally a little bit you can understand why she kicked him out and so forth but here like she even she wasn't very good she was a bit of a whinge as well um yeah. she became but, the present of course but the first volume worked well because um he was the earth's warrior you know the worth world savior he killed every Every organic being in the galaxy, Dave had killed. He had protected the Earth, and then there was no organic life left in the solar system. So he had nothing left to do, and he got a dead-end job, and he was miserable. Everyone else moved on. Everyone else upgraded and updated their software, so they didn't need to fight anymore. But Dave never gave up on that. He was stuck in his way. So then when the aliens come back, and Dave gets to kick butt again, you're there with him and you're like, yes, look at him go. He's waited for this moment. And then volume two comes along and you're like, mm, they're just going to send him back in time. And volume three, I'll make him run for president. It just, it's not Dave. Dave needs to be fighting alien invaders. I don't think they know what to do with him by this this yeah. third one. I think the second one was a bit of a get out of jail free card with a, with a timey wimey sort of um, storyline. But this one was just, I think it was just an excuse to make the book. That's that's yeah. that's where I have a problem. Like, why make it then? You know, like, what, like, why do it? Like, I don't get the impression that creators would have this story in mind to make and want to make it with Dave. I get the impression maybe they were asked to do something, just give us a Dave story for the sake of it. And they just kind of had no real ideas for it, to be honest. Um, I mean, it could have been more interesting. Like, Shane, you write, rewrite books all the time. I'm sure you have plenty of ideas here. But even have, like, a civil war, have Dave's army, have Sam's army, have a civil war, go back to fighting, like, as, as Dave's well, you know, used the to. The book actually starts off, and you think it's going in a different direction. You know, he's talking to the world computer, the world mode, yeah. the, the world hard drive, He's you know, and he says, um, what's what happens after death? You know, he's like having this existential crisis and he wants to know when he dies, is there going to be an afterlife? And the ro- the the hard drive is like, no, he's like, no, 100 percent. No, I can't even believe humans believed in that crap. But no, there is nothing after life. But then he says to Dave, you've got like 74 percent power left. Um, yeah. You're going to outlive this planet. And Dave is like, wait, what? You know, you mm-hmm. know when the planet's going to end. And then he just gets ushered out. Yeah. So then you think, oh, maybe this is about Dave trying to figure out is the when's the world going to end? Yeah. You know, that would is, be this computer, is the computer gearing up to destroy the world really soon? And then Dave has to actually save the world, not save the world from external external threats, but actually the world is going to implode, explode, whatever, and Dave has to stop it. But no, he just has to run for president. And it was a bit like that's anticlimactic to what you started the book as you started the book making it sound like it was going to be earth shattering Mm -hmm. and it it just sort of fizzled out not just earth shattering but to to fix it you have limited time because it's happening soon you have 74 percent or 76 percent whatever it was so just like have his like battery or power whatever it is 
going down every so often, every every and issue. There's your ticking the clock, and there's your ticking clock. It's all against the run of the time, and obviously come to some sort of grand conclusion where he saves the world and whatever else. But it's just we got something you're right. We got something completely different from what the first issue kind of set up, and it was stupid. We got Dave versus Google, pretty much. <laughs> That's, that's evidently what we got with the power company, which stole their logo from Shell. Mm. So, yep. I, I just, I love that little yeah. nod. But well, I mean, it was just the power company stepped away after issue one. It never really properly reared its head of how involved they was till the end. And, and they realized just, it was all falling apart, really. Yeah. And it was just some guy floating around in Google with poopy fart butt jokes consistently and it's like oh. okay well he's, he's made a character that reminded me of max headroom <laughs> that, that's what sam reminded me of as i was reading it i was like okay with the big bold over the top attitude and mm-hmm. i just i don't know yeah, i was like what is this book trying to say is it trying to say big tech bad because you know obviously you have the data mining of google and even though it was power mining for robots for us it's the data mining aspect of it so he's saying oh that's terrible look what they're doing they're taking your life force essentially and then you have um then you have this guy making a presidential candidate and having him run for president um, and then altering basically altering facts and the news so that his person gets voted in So, so you're saying big tech and all this is bad but then by the end of the book it just goes back to the stats quo and everyone just carries on because Sally doesn't exactly say that she's going to get rid of earth power. Hmm. You know, she doesn't say that these things are going to be erased or amended. She just says she's going to try and do better. Hmm. So it, it just didn't complete anything. No. Yeah, it, it really didn't. It's, it didn't set anything up next. They didn't complete anything. And um, what? Why? I mean, I mean, does the do the creators of this book? I think that everyone who works for Big Tech is really stupid, by the way, because everyone just appears really dumb in their language, the way they speak to one another. I'm just like, is this meant to like show what the younger generation who work in tech companies are like? Because if if that's the case, then we're all doomed. Because I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Dave and the robots lived. Was it the humans they defeated, or aliens, or I think there was humans at some stage in this, this the world? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So very much Terminator style. So humans have been replaced. Intelligent humans have been replaced by these stupid robots who talk like this. It's just, it just really irks me. Like I know it's comic well, and it's fictional, but like, come on. It so wasn't sad. originally. It wasn't originally though. That that was the. That's what I liked about Dave. They were the higher level of intelligence, and it's only after they completely wiped human race out they ended up dumbing themselves Becoming down them. because they fell. They fell into being like what we are, doing our mundane day to day tasks, doing jobs, and yeah, yeah. But this... they realised they had to do the jobs that no one else could do, so mm. it had to get done, and they just became us. But a, a yeah. more dumb version than us. It's fair to say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I do like that they use jobs and um in the volume one they use jobs and gates as their god and jesus terminology yeah. when they're like oh my gates and things and, like that and uh saws uh no what was wasn't it for wasn't lucky um yeah. <laughs> it's it's some of it is 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 inc- is creative yeah, um fun. and the jokes in in day volume one had me cracking up like mm-hmm. It was fantastic. Um, from his boss in Dave One that just wants to tell him that he hates him and he's terrible at his job. I just need you to know that. You know, and he's like, Dave, you're really bad at your job, and I just want you to know that. And Dave, I hate you. I just want you to know that. Like that's a funny joke. And then in this, you just don't really have any of the any of the comedy. I think the um the the panel with the CNN news and the Fox News when the anchors mm-hmm. are talking, that was funny. That yeah. they, that was really funny. Because, that because had two different story. It's two different versions. Wasn't the same story. Yeah, yeah, but they end in the same place because it's yeah. mainstream media. So they're at the end of both of their reports. They're like, vote for Sam because he's the one that we're endorsing. And then when Scotty quit, and he was like, "Please suck my butt," and he just leaves. Like that made me chuckle. <laughs> I I did. It's it's stupid little things like that. But that's all it was. It was stupid 
like you like you said feel fart jokes and just calling people names and it just it just didn't feel as mature as the first one yeah i, f- I feel like with the jokes the name calling they were trying to be almost cute kind of like i hit fairyland you know mother fluffers or whatever not not as cute as candy like that but like just like a cute funny joke and it didn't it did not come across like that it just came across like every one of you characters are just a bit dumb a bit see serious. i appreciated it at the first start going back to day i know we're talking about going back to day one i appreciated those you know i i thought the uh, the man it was used was enough you know mm. I, I i don't like too much of it i felt like i was starting to get a little bit overwhelmed with it in dave two and this one continued on and it just i felt i was just maxed out as i said before with the poopy fart butt jokes mm. it just um yeah i just scotty they dumbed his character down way too much in this volume because he was very teenage and a little bit more complex in the first one now he his whole character was based around the poopy butt jokes it, it just becomes tiresome doesn't it just mm. like he just gets sick of listening to it and again you mentioned scotty there and he was quite an endearing character in the first one the first dave and the reason why we refer to the first dave is because it sets it sets the the marker for mm. me as to what this could be and he, again because they've done a second and third series kind of think to yourself will go better than what you've done but they've actually went down the way um but I mean, did any of them have any kind of good like arc, like in terms of growth or redemption, or like there was nothing? There was no nothing happened to any of the characters. Go well, they ended the book different than they started the book, other than Scotty not having a job anymore, and obviously making amends of his fiance. But like, you, you, did you care by the end of the book? To be honest, because I didn't. I think the that's the only part of this book I can defend. It, 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 I actually felt like. I had a bit more emotion when I got to that final stage of this book mm. when they had the fight in space and then we had that setting up for the end. That part gripped me by the end and it wasn't a case of wanting to get through it. I actually at that point enjoyed what they were telling me. It just felt as if he it, it took him four issues to find his feet and mm. he finally gave me something I actually cared about and it was the final few pages, yeah. which was a shame. Yeah. That was it was a decent ending to the character of Dave, um, mm. even though it got there in a lackluster way. The ending was very emotional um, if you followed him from volumes one to three, especially with Scotty, you know, saying I love you and him sort of just dying in his arms. Um, it would have been nice to end it on a little bit of a joke as well, you know, like so he goes out telling the main computer, ah, I didn't outlive the earth. You know, and just something like, ah, you said I had longer than the world. You were wrong. You're not well, I got, knowing. I like the little touch as well. I don't know if you noticed that Scotty was wearing Dave's trainers. Yeah. He as well, he's back, he's converse. He put them and, on, yeah. Uh, yeah. Tell me, obviously, I'm, I'm sorry for spoiling it for people that haven't, haven't read it yet, but was the final image, was Dave? Yep. Dave becomes the mainframe. Yeah, and even the, yeah. the little the little Daves, the whatever the army of Dave drones or whatever they are, so he could he's present everywhere now, isn't he? Hmm. But who yeah. cares? Please don't do another Dave. Don't don't do a Scotty joke or Scotty book. Just end end it now. That's it. Done. I think yeah, this suffers from back. Klaus. This suffers from the Klaus syndrome. This um, first volume, I would recommend. To people you want a sci-fi book you want a comedy sci-fi book i would recommend dave you know that like anyone i want a christmas book read klaus volume one i would never recommend volumes two or three of klaus or of daveocracy unfortunately and it breaks my heart to say that because i have all the covers all the variants you know i <laughs> i enjoy looking at the covers but this is the first time i've reread it because i i read it once when it came out in 2017 and went in a box and i forgot all about it Whereas day volume one, I go back to that. Because it's a shame. I, after I read day volume one, I was like, oh, if this comes out as a trilogy hardcover, I'd, I'd like to own it. <laughs> I, thought, oh, that, I was, you know, it set me up for in a good place. And then it just steadily dragged me yeah. down. I was like, no. It's yeah. just, it, it's, it, there are plenty of graphic novels out there, paperback, that just have one volume, one undone, 
start middle and an end that's it that's what dave should have been um and i don't if i've been pretty honest for an ind indie but uh publisher like idw i'm not sure how big of a following dave would have had in terms of like i don't think people would be pining for a second or third volume of this no especially when idw have got some bigger franchise yeah. names on their roster um this would have got lost in the it would have done i would have got lost in the mix like all the other books uh you know taking precedent of, over it and again i don't know what 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 was the i i, I doubt very much shane's petitioning for you know new dave series because the only person i know who's ever read this besides from ourselves obviously well i mean i read the first volume and i was like this is great it was a as far as i was concerned a standalone volume it had a start and middle and an end there was no need for any more. But then when I heard Dave 2 was coming out, I was like, obviously I'm going to get that because I love the first one. And then I was like, yeah. oh, this is okay. I mean, it only got four issues instead of five. So I think even they knew that it wasn't as, as strong a story as volume one. And then this only got four issues as well. So I, they know. I think it's okay to just do a single story, a single standalone story now. But greed will always get the best of any creator any publisher if a volume does well even if it's because of variants or whatever they think they can get that money again they'll ask the writer and creator to do it again quality be damned see the thing is to be honest dave set up a universe and it was funny right what they could have been, if they wanted to continue this story a lot like with dave and they could have had like yearly one shot like so one a, a one yeah. shot adventure of dave or whatever just something like that and just keep the essence of what dave was yeah. you know um and just do do that instead of going down this road i just think they've yeah. went down a road that they just kind of got lost what what do we actually do with dave here what like how do we actually you know well, build them up or whatever i just think they just like that one shot every so yeah. often every, every couple of years grand i mean dave dave's story was done in volume one so you can end Dave's story, keep the universe going, you know, and then you just have a different robot in a one shot. What was he doing while Dave was saving the world? Or what is he doing? Or have flashbacks. And I mean, it set up the universe so well because you have the robots were created by humans. They killed the humans. They decided they wanted to kill all um, non-artificial life. So they ventured out into the universe and killed everyone. So they were the sole intelligent life in the universe and then hundreds of years later this alien race lands that they've never heard of didn't even know existed and they have no idea what to do what to do because it's been so long since they've dealt with it that's a good premise mm -hmm. and then the second volume these humans come from the past and um, dave needs to get them back to the past otherwise the, they won't create the robots that kill them so that they won't exist so dave has to send these humans back to create the robots that will eventually kill them that's a decent premise. I mean, it wasn't mm. a great book, but it's a good premise because mm. it makes sense. You have these humans, if they stay in the future, they won't go back. They won't invent the robots. So it's this time loop that needs to be sorted out. This, Dave runs for president and doesn't win. I mean, it doesn't have the gravitas of the first two volumes at all, no. does it? I, I mean, if just... Go on. Sorry, I was going to say, like, just going back to what you guys said about doing one shots, if, if, and this, I hate to speak ill of the writer. If he can't tell a compelling story across four issues, what would we have got for a one shot? True, but that, that, that's the point I'm trying to make. For me personally, I'm, I'm not too sure Dave has legs to continue on. But if they wanted to do it, if they wanted to keep Dave relevant and bring something out, instead of bringing us this, we have the right a four issue story that makes no sense. Just give us a one shot of an adventure. And Dave fans like Shane, whatever else, would have bought that and would have enjoyed it. Yeah. But they they wanted to bring Dave out again, but they didn't. I'm not convinced they they knew what to do with it. And as Shane mentioned earlier on, that idea they like, like set this up that the world's going to end before Dave's battery or whatever runs out. Like that's that's a better premise. That they're running for president, and not winning. So they just went the wrong way with this book. And I just think if you were limited to a one shot, you would have a more uh, tight, tighter story 
you know yeah a bit more of a direct yeah direct to the ending sort of yeah angle as opposed to having to fill that you know filler in yeah i mean and rather than try to continue the story that you set up that you you create the universe so the universe is set you've done that you don't have to continue it you can stop there but what you can have is you can have dave telling scott some stories so Dave is telling Scotty about the time he traveled yeah. to an alien planet to kill these guys because they heard that they were discovering space travel and they, there was a chance they could come to Earth. Or they wanted to go to another planet to save some robots that they heard were being used as slaves. You know, you can just add anything, but add it to the past so that yeah. you can just you and, can just and, throw it away then it's a throwaway story and to be fair that gets done all the time with the big two like what i'm thinking of is like you know i'm, I'm a fan of cosmic ghost Rider, and he had a, a, a five or six issue story where was it he destroys marvel universe and it was basically yeah. like him talking to his was he talking to his previous self and frank castle about previous stories that happened type of thing or his grandson or son whatever it was i remember and it's like you could do that it's easy here you are in the future or at a, in the present day, sorry, talking to your son about things that have happened in the past that we don't know about because we've only seen the first book. Just yeah. tell us those stories. Make them tighter. Make them funnier. Um, yeah. Give us the give us the old Dave. Because that way you're still giving us the old Dave who's a bit of a miserable git and bored and mundane or else he's one of the, the, the fighter robots. And we're still getting all that while Dave still maintains his kind of uh, current persona or whatever. So yeah, I just think there's there's ways it could have went about having additional Dave volumes, and I think if they've picked this, um, it just tells me that I'm not too sure they had too many good ideas. No, I mean, how hard is it? You have Scotty going into the garage, and there's a box that just says "old crap," and he just looks through it, and he goes, "What's this?" And he goes, "Oh, I got that on," and then story begins, and then you've got a nice thirty-page story about mm. how Dave got a stick that glows in the dark from a planet. Do you know what I mean, it doesn't even have to be anything important. It's just a box of crap in the garage that Scotty is going through. And then the next time you want to do a one shot, you have Scotty go through the box again and he finds something else. There's your setup. And Dave can just tell him a story. And I would read those. Mm -hmm. Because then it's like, then it's, oh, all right. The second one's not great. Third one, third one's good. It's an anthology series. So you don't have to read them in order or you, and you can just grab one off the shelf and read well, it if it's really good Dave-ology. yeah Dave-ology. Dave-ology. <laughs> nice one. there um, you go idw i've just sorted out volume four for you so uh, this is what i ask if you know when volume two wasn't great and volume three is obviously the worst of the three if they were to release more singles shane would you still buy it like are you invested that much into dave that you would buy the completionist in me the completionist in me would want the covers um i'm not gonna lie um would i read it i don't know if i'd read it i'd buy it i don't know if i would read it after this i would probably give that you know what i would give them one more go i think i would i'd give them the benefit of the doubt and assume that this was just the writer's anxiety about the new president and you know he has tds so he needed to get it out into print so that's fine um but the next story as long as it has nothing to do you know dave comes back to life and then now he's the computer and now he's done the calculation so he knows when the earth's going to be destroyed scotty we have to save the planet yeah if dave stays as the computer and scotty does that i would i'd give him a go a redemption arc yeah I think I think everyone deserves the second chance. I know this is the third chance, but I'll give I'll class this as their first and chance. See, that's it. what they could do there is like you know, say Scotty doesn't know how to do something. I don't know how he could do this. I could kill this alien race or whatever else. Blah blah blah. It's like Scott, then then uh, uh, Dave brings up like a YouTube for a video of him <laughs> twenty years ago. I done this, son. You know what I mean? You could do it. Here's how you do it. Here's a high to video or something. You know, there there are ways they can make it interesting. Am I still keeping the comedy? Um, yeah it needs to go back to being fun if they can bring the fun back because that's what's lost in this book this isn't fun this is preachy this is political and this is one-sided and my my word is just dumb in general i just don't 
I just wasn't on board with it at all. Um, didn't intrigue me, didn't compel me to read on. Like I say, I wanted to finish this after the first. In actual fact, it was like the first six pages or something. I was like, why am I reading this junk? <laughs> and if it wasn't for the nerd herd, I would have put it down and forgot all about it. Lucky it's less than 100 pages. So That, that 100, I felt like I was reading Watchmen. <laughs> that's, that's what felt like I was reading. Like that, those 98 pages, whatever it was, felt like reading an Alan Moore graphic novel. Um, it was just oh. you say for the sequel, yeah. If it's going to be Scotty as the main character, you know, I'd like to see him, Dave, move from the supercomputer to a more tiny computer so he's like a little companion that goes with him, you know, like yeah. uh, I don't know, like BB 8 from Star Wars or something like, like one that. One of those little Dave, one of the little Dave, he downloads himself into one of the little Lego it's a mini Dave, yeah, <laughs> and just yeah. follows him around. So- I was thinking about this, like you just kind of mentioned, like I was thinking when you were talking there, like with Sam, why wasn't he Ultron? Like, because he was the whole of the internet was mm-hmm. kind of put into Sam. So why couldn't he control everything? You know, so I feel because like he was only the information. He was only the he was only the text of the internet. So he mm-hmm. just knew everything that was online because he had dank memes. Because that was okay. something people said in 2017. <laughs> I was just thinking, like with like you mentioned, they're having you know, Dave and a mini computer or a mini uh, figure, or whatever. Like Dave could easily put himself in like, the most glamorous, uh, robust, uh, shiniest robot in the world and just implant his kind of whatever into that. That, like, you know, that could be another story, you know. But maybe he has to stay as the supercomputer to keep Earth going. Otherwise, mm-hmm. if he leaves it, if he downloads himself into a new body, he leaves the Earth open to attack. He's forever saving the world now. Yeah, he's just stuck in a loop of just saving the world constantly. That's what he wants. He wants to keep fighting, I suppose. A fairy end then to, to Dave. Dave. Yeah. Good old Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I just think... It, it, I say every book has potential um, once you have created the universe. But he created the universe and then didn't do anything with it. Like we were just in Google headquarters mm. and we saw the old power, Earth power robots. Like yeah. they didn't come out and do anything, they didn't fight anyone. There was no mm. expansion of the world in this one. You know, in the second one, we had the expansion from the past because we saw who created them and it expanded on the law. And it's funny you should say that because the best part of the book was when they weren't on the Earth. <laughs> yeah, in Spain. The fight scene in space. Yeah. Hmm? Fight scene yeah, in space. That was, that, was, that was the best part, best part of the story. Yeah, yeah. that's a shame. Um, does anyone have anything else they want to say about Daveocracy? I think we've said 51 uh, minutes more than we really had to, to be honest. <laughs> we couldn't have just come on and gone, no. Bye. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, it's a shame. It is a shame, considering the first volume. Like I say, Klaus Syndrome. Klaus Volume 1, I say it all the time, phenomenal book, absolutely amazing, perfect Christmas book. Great character, great art, great design. Everything about it is fantastic. And then volume two is just, I did not enjoy that. And volume three, I don't even know what the hell that was. Exactly the same as this. Like volume one, great. Volume two, meh. Yeah. Volume three, what the hell is that? Yeah, <laughs> it's like, yeah it was, it, it just felt disjointed. As you said earlier, it wasn't Dave. It wasn't Dave. And experiencing them one after the other. Um, yeah, I, I felt the disjoint between each volume like from you know one to two to three i, I felt it you were starting did, have, just let me ask you martin whenever you were reading each volume at a time did you note down your score before you started the next one yes okay because so I, I would i would imagine reading this as a whole it would probably skew your kind of previous scores or maybe it will actually bring them up because well this is so crap that going one from a six to an eight because yeah, because so you know? I, I did. I know my scores for the one and two, and I say I I knew my scores going into watching the previous shows as well. Mm-hmm. So I watch them and see if that changed my opinion. Yeah, it's been a busy Dave day this last twenty four <laughs> hours. 
a busy day. <laughs> right, can we log off now? Come on. That was that's the best. This stream, that's the best joke when talking about this comic, including the comic. So, well done. Um, shall we get to our final thoughts and scores then? Yeah, let's get this over with. Okay. Um, if you've read along in the chat, please drop your score in and we will add it to ours as always. Um, before we get the score for this one though, Martin, yeah, what did you score, Dave Volume One? Dave Volume One, I went with the seven. Nice, nice. So, yeah, uh, we had an average of 7.4, so that fits in quite nicely. Um, what did you score, Dave Volume Two? Dave Volume Two dropped to a five. Mm. A five again, I that fits in with us. We have an average of 5.1 for Dave Two. Wow, okay. So, what did you score, Dave Three? Or, Dave sorry, three. Democracy? right? I'm not going to be too brutal, but. We've covered a lot of stuff on here. We've said we didn't like the story. You know, the art was consistent again from previous from previous volumes. <sighs> Such painful. Sorry. Um, I'm gonna have to go with a three point five. That's low. Wow. Yeah. We're getting into Doctor Strange and Witchblade yeah. numbers. <laughs> yeah, that's my lowest I've ever scored, I think. Mm. I mean, I think it's a, I think it's a fair score, personally. Mm. Um, Phil? Will I give Scott's? I have Scott's here. Will I give his? Uh, yeah. First? Okay. So Scott has written, uh, it says, not amazing, but not bad. The art has been consistent over every day of book, but the story of each one seemed to have dipped further and further. I think I'm also fatigued with the language used, and we agree with that, we've said that. Some of it was funny, but only internally, and nothing laugh out loudish. Uh, the story was slightly, slightly predictable, and also a bit messy, which it was, and Scott's gave it a 4.5. Cool. Out of 10. Um, my verdict is pretty much everything we've said, and if, if anything, my score is higher because of day of one, the first day of like, I feel, I feel, I'm a feel guilty to be really low with this. But if you had to give me the Davocracy and Secret Wars 2 and ask me to choose, I'm picking Secret Wars 2 to read again. That's, I, I know, it's, I know. I just, maybe it's what's fresh in my mind. I don't know. I, I feel a, a tinge of disappointment. I feel like the art's fine. It, you know, can't fault the art or than what we've said about being flat and not having the motion, but really it looks okay. The story was poor. The characters uh, didn't have any kind of growth for growth or any kind of main story that made them compelling to, to be attached to or whatever. And you mean you brought up Witchblade? Um, Witchblade looked far superior than this did. So if I'm going low. And which we have the better art than this. Uh, this is a three for me, and I think that's being generous because I feel guilty even saying a three. But the way I see it, I think I scored volume two a five as well, and this is so much worse than volume two than Dave two. Yeah. So it's, it's it's a three for me. Sorry, I was gonna say sorry, Shane, but you thought your pick. It's Scott's pick. Sorry, I didn't Shane. pick it. <laughs> I only pick. I picked the first. I did pick the second one, but I certainly didn't pick this. And now you know why I yeah. didn't pick Dave or Chrissy. I have to say, before we started the show, I was at a four. So I've gone, down, gone down by point five. Point. Oh, point five. five. You went down. Yes. Went down by point five because of the chat. Mm -hmm. So the chat does that. We our score goes up or down mm. because of it. So mine, my score has also gone down. Um, I was at a four point five after reading this but i think that was um nostalgia for the first one and remembering the universe and dave as a whole but after talking about it and realizing just how bad this book is um i've gone down to a four um this isn't this isn't a reread this isn't i mean even like when i'm flicking through my comic boxes the covers for this aren't as good as volumes one and two mm. so even though i have them they're not something i take out and i look through as much as it is, volumes one and two so it's a shame but it's a four from me and um, we do have one score in the chat 
from Liam. He says, I didn't enjoy any of the series as previously stated my previous scores are. Five and four, but I didn't feel those are accurate anymore. Updating scores would be um, one to four would be ten. Wait, I was one. Oh, sorry, well, one to volume, four. Volume, ten. Volume, volume ones were a ten. Volume three. <laughs> yeah, I just, thought, yeah, I just thought we gave it a ten. Yeah. So, yeah. So volume one would be a four. Volume two would be a three, and volume three would be a four point five. Wow. So, so he gives it a four point five. So with Martin's 3.5 and Liam's 4.5. That gives us a herd average of four. That's fair. So, I mean, it goes along with ours. Um, did you get the average, Phil? Or am I getting the average? Yes, I have it here. So uh, with my three, Scott's 4.5, Shane's four, and the herd average of four, it gives us uh, an average of 3.9. So, uh, yeah, it's that's not going to make the top 10. But we'll have a look at the top 10 anyway, just to see. Yeah, it isn't getting up there, is it? No, no, I don't. Is it even making the second page? With <laughs> no, straight in the bottom. What's worse than Battle <gasps> Pug? Oh, oh dear. no! <laughs> oh, oh, dear me! Oh, oof. A um, whole point as about... well. A whole point worse than Battle Pug. Um, can we get the average for Dave? Overall, so we have a 7.4, 5.1, and a 3.9. 5.1, let's work this out. 3.9 uh, gives us an average. Have I done this right? Da -da -da. Nope, give me one second. <laughs> Quick math an average of 5.5. .5. Oh, hopefully, that's that correct. Do... Scott can, can, can fix this next week if it's not. Um, so 5.5 nope. completely throws it off the top 10 yeah. leaderboard for sequels. Where does it end up with a 5.5? Oof. 13th under, place under Snot, Snot Girl. Girl. Oh. No. This, it, this volume has dragged it down. This volume. Yeah. I mean, look at that. With just one and two, it's in the top 10 with a 7.1. But the thing is, if you Heck. also consider, like, Klaus is not in the top 10 because of its volumes one and two so we're comparing this to klaus with the same yeah. kind of idea it's happened before klaus once should be near the top of that uh top 10 but obviously mm -hmm. the series as a whole two and three weren't as good just like two and three weren't as good here and this has really dragged it down it's what happens it's what happens when you start off really strong and then you just dip and this is the bottom of the barrel it's unfortunate but it is what it is. That was Dave Ocracy, and it scored a three point. What did it score? Three point nine. Nice. Wow, cool. the lowest of the season. I think that deserves a round of applause. Actually, lowest of the it, season. It, it definitely does not deserve <laughs> anything. <laughs> um, hopefully, next week does a little bit better because it's my pick next week. Shall we show everyone what we're going to be reading next week? Yeah, bye. Let's do it. We're reading The Boys, Volume 1. If you've watched the Amazon series and you want to know where they got their source material, give it a go and join us next week for that. I'm looking forward to that. I love the show. Never read a comic. I've had this for like two years and I haven't cracked it open. Haven't got stuck in yet myself, but I have got three oversized hardcovers for The Boys right there. So I'm going to crack that first one open now. Yeah, I, I, I'm, let's hope I'm it's good then. If you've got two and three as well, <laughs> I know that this this let's put Roll the say, dice. I, I'm kind of hoping that I enjoy this. I was waiting for this to read um, before I pulled the trigger in those omnibuses. If they're still around, to be fair, but uh, Martin's on the opposite of me. He's went full tilt and bought all three. Yeah, all I mean, it's got, yeah. it's got to be better than a three point nine, isn't it? Like yeah. it's got to though, isn't it? <laughs> it already <laughs> has. Oh, please at least be a four. Yeah. I don't. Want that. <laughs> Yeah, should be fun. Um, 
so I think that's it. Um, we don't have anything coming up on the channel this week, if I'm not um, mistaken. I don't believe so. Um, what you can do if you want to go back and rewatch, uh, what's all the only fuss about, which was last weekend. Um, it was me and Martin and Highland G, and um, yeah, we we uh, I get a little bit giddy because we had some YouTube royalty in the chat, didn't we? We did, point. yeah. And uh, but yeah, so go back check it out, out. And she and your quiz is still there. If you, anyone hasn't seen the recent edition of the quiz, check that yes, out. Yes, you can head back and watch. There's a few of a uh, few of my quizzes are now on the Nerd Herd channel, and the next one, which will be a general knowledge quiz, will be out later this month. So keep an eye out for that. Pete's just joined <laughs> us. One hour and five minutes in. Um, to be fair, He's you, just you, did, you didn't miss anything. Um, Dave Ocracy wasn't very good. Three point nine out of ten. Don't don't read it. Don't read yet. No. And also, if you haven't seen it yet, go and watch Kev's draw along from last week. Yes, a really good one. Spider Man. Yes, he's he's just smashing it, isn't he? Mm, we should yeah, have got. We should have asked him to draw Dave like in motion to see what it looked like. Yeah, <laughs> you haven't seen it in the three three volumes. <laughs> yeah, what was it where actually Dave is he moves on his face? Show us that. <laughs> but yeah. So thank you all for joining, joining next week for The Boys, where I will be hosting again, unfortunately for you lot, sorry. Um, but yes, looking forward to reading that. We will see you then. There's nothing left to do now, but Martin, why don't you say it? Get your waves out. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Love you.